Hello friends and welcome back to another virtual story time with Miss Liz. It's been a while since I've read a book to you from somewhere other than my office at the library. But today you'll see that I am outside and you can probably hear the outside too as traffic is passing nearby. But bear with me, I could not pass up an opportunity to read a very special book in a very special place. If you look behind me, you will see the We the Youth mural, which was painted collaboratively by the artist Keith Haring and a group of young people from Philadelphia and New York. This mural was painted in 1987, two years before even I was born. Fun fact, it's the only Keith Haring mural in Philadelphia and the only collaborative Keith Haring mural, mural that is still in its original location. So the reason I chose this spot today at the Herring Garden in Point Breeze, only a block from my library in Point Breeze, is because I have a Keith Haring book that just arrived at my library. Today, we'll be reading Art is Life, the life of artist Keith Haring. The words in this book were written by Tammy Lewis Brown and the pictures were drawn by Keith Negley. And together we're going to learn a bit more about the artist who created this amazing mural. Stay tuned to the end when I will give you a fuller picture of the mural behind me. Ready? Here we go. Art is Life. The Life of Artist Keith Haring by Tammy Lewis Brown, illustrated by Keith Negley. And this here, this is Keith Haring, the artist who helped paint this amazing mural behind me. Keith passed away in 1990 when I was only one year old, but his art lives on after him. Here we go. When Keith Haring was a small boy in a small town in Pennsylvania, he sat on his father's lap, doodling dragons and dogs and circles and snakes. He shut his eyes and drew fast and sure, scribbling and scrawling yellow and green and orange imaginary things that only he could see. When I grow up, I would like to be an artist, Keith wrote when he was 10 years old. The reason is because I like to draw. And you can tell that he did. So, Nearly every minute of every day, Keith drew. Art flowed from his fingers and it welled up inside him, in his heart and in his imagination. Everywhere Keith went, it was as if art was all around him. Can you see him drawing? There's pictures on the floor and even more pictures coming out of his imagination. Art was Keith's life and his life was art. When Keith was a teenager studying in Pittsburgh, an artist named Christo came to speak at the Carnegie Museum of Art. In California, Christo had built a fabric fence 18 feet high and 24 miles long. The slender white line dashed and darted, weaved and wagged over hills, around bends, across roads and rocks until it stretched far out, disappearing into the sea. Just like the art that skipped and hopped and snapped and popped inside Keith's head. He was feeling inspired. At first, some people didn't like Christo's art, but once they saw the dancing river of cloth, they began to understand something new about art and about beauty and about the world we live in. As Keith watched Christo's film and heard him speak, he understood too. The public needs art, Keith wrote in his journal. Art is for everybody. Art is life and life is art. Look at him feeling amazed 
as he put these ideas on paper for the first time. When Keith was 20, he attended the School of Visual Art in New York. He taped long strips of paper over the classroom walls and rolled even more across the floor. With a brush and a pot of paint, he swooped and he swung, he aligned and he striped. Black paint splashed as the thick brush dashed, swiping patterns to the beat of loud, thumping music. The way his father had taught him when he was small. Until finally, the whole room was covered with the strange shapes that rumbled inside Keith's brain. And look what it's gonna be like on the next page. <gasps> wow. And Keith was left with art all around him. Isn't that incredible? But that is not the end of Keith's story. Art is life and life is art. As much as the teachers and students and everybody else, else loved Keith's lively art, they loved Keith his enthusiasm and exuberance, his joy and his jubilance, even more. You can see all of those things in this picture. In New York, Keith rode the subway. The stations were decayed and dark and dreary. The subway cars heaved, hot and hectic and the crowds bounced, brusque and bored, as they stared at blank black paper pasted over placards where old advertisements had been stripped away. And this, this gave Keith an idea. Keith knew that the streets and the subways and the people of New York needed art all around them too. Art that could make their imaginations dance and prance, roar, and soar, just like the art inside Keith's head. The art that followed him wherever he went. So one day, just a little bit more than a year after he'd arrived in the city, Keith had an artful idea. He ran up the subway station stairs to the street, and he bought a stick of white chalk. Art is life, he thought to himself. Life is art. Then he marched back down into the subway station and he brought his ideas with him. Chalk dust swirled as Keith's art unfurled where everyone could see it. Ringed with rays of light and energy, radiant babies crawled. Washed it with waves of sound and commotion, joyful dogs barked. Stunned by sketches of dancing men and spaceships and robots and dollar bills, surprised commuters stopped and stared. And some of them began to imagine and understand and laugh and cheer and clap their hands. Wow, his art was having an impact. But police stopped him and sometimes even arrested him for drawing on the walls. Sometimes Keith was scared for himself and for other young artists whose work came under attack. But sometimes I finish, he said, and there's applause from the whole station. Look at them cheering as he finishes one of his pieces here in this picture. There were people who thought his pictures were just scribbles and they said he was making a mess. Others thought his pictures were gorgeous. They believed he was making masterpieces. That is what I believe to be true. Before long, Keith was invited to hang his pictures in art galleries like this one. But he would keep sneaking them onto alley walls too, because alley walls are for everybody and not everybody can get to an art gallery. 
he painted boisterous crowds hugging or cheering or working together. He built massive sculptures that filled park lawns and tiny ones that fit on shelves. He drew winged angels and a man with three eyes and dancing cats and throbbing hearts. Art is life and life is art, he remembered. And look at all the kids having fun on his sculpture in the park. Almost overnight, it seemed that Keith and his radiant babies and barking dogs and zapping robots and all the rest of his creations were famous. But he still wanted everyone to see and feel the art all around him. In 1986, a year before they built this mural, he opened a store in the Soho neighborhood of New York City and called it the Pop Shop. There's an illustration of it there. He made pictures against racism and drug abuse, pictures supporting unity and love, and toys and t-shirts, posters and pens, inexpensive art that anyone could take home. He welcomed everyone to come and see and even to buy. Kids from the Bronx who spray painted graffiti and ladies from Park Avenue who were draped in minks and pearls. Everybody was welcome at Keith's Pop Shop. And the art there was meant for anyone to be able to own, not just if you had a lot of money to buy it. Down in the streets, Keith's art popped on shirts and sneakers. On museum walls, Keith's dogs barked at Monet's water lilies and Picasso's acrobats. Here is a picture of his work in a museum. From New York to California, Tokyo to Paris, Keith painted everywhere for everyone. Some of his artwork made grown-ups blush. Others made children laugh and old people smile. Most of all, Keith's art made people dream and imagine and think and understand a little more than they had before about art and life and the world we live in. Keith Haring died in February 1990 when he was just 31 years old, but his art still surrounds us today. Pictures that make people smile and laugh and cry and think, drawings that buzz and whir and shout and whisper, paintings that look simple but help us understand complicated ideas, art that inspires and inquires and opens imaginations. Like Keith Haring, the artist whose life was a work of art. The end. If you all check out this book for yourselves, you can read the author's note and the illustrator's note at the end of this book, as well as resources for adults and resources for kids on Keith and related artists. I hope you all enjoyed reading Art is Life, The Life of Artist Keith Haring. Remember, you can find this book at the Free Library of Philadelphia. Now, if you all want to see the rest of the mural, I'm about to pick up my phone and show you the whole scope of the work behind me called We the Youth. Here we go. Behind me this way is the title of the mural and you see dancing people. Some have solid colors and some have more images inside. It goes way up high over my head and down to the end of this building, all the way up the walls. It's hard to get it all in one picture, so I encourage you all to come and see it for yourselves. You're able to find this mural at 22nd and Ellsworth Streets in the Point Breeze neighborhood of Philadelphia. And don't forget, this was painted not just by adults and proper artists like Keith, this was painted by the community, by Keith, and by many young people from all over. So just because you're young and just because you haven't studied art,
doesn't mean that you can't be an artist too. I know that Keith Haring would be excited to see each and every one of you exploring your own kind of art. So thank you all for reading with me again today. Please do come and see this mural for yourself. It's even more beautiful in person. And I will see you soon for more great books. Thanks for watching.